So I'm going to introduce the Ecological Risk Assessment Specialty Group. Um, I'd say we're probably one of the newer groups, although I'm not exactly sure uh, when we got started. I'd say probably five or six years, I think. Um, we have approximately 100 current members. Uh, the affiliations of our members are fairly equally distributed across academia, industry, and government. We have a real good mix of, of uh, members in the group. And we do have a website that is currently hosted by Neptune and Company, but I didn't even put it down here because it's so completely out of date. Um, it's, it's fairly hopeless. That's one of the things that was on our list for this year. And, uh, kind of fell to the bottom of the list, and so now it's going to go to the top of the list for next year, and I hope the incoming chair <laughs> really takes that on quickly. Uh, no, there was actually some disagreement. Is it going to be hosted by SRA ultimately? or Still trying to figure that out. So once we, once we have that, of course, we'll make that, uh, that, we'll let everyone know. So, as the name suggests, we want to provide a forum for discussing issues related to ecological risk assessment. Um, some themes that we've been talking about this year uh, include population risk, uh, how to assess risks to populations rather than, of course, as human health does it, to individuals. Um, sort of traditionally, ecological risk assessment has followed that non-cancer risk paradigm. Um, but in recent years, they've, uh, we, we've sort of um, had some evolving methods. For one thing, uh, unlike with human health risk assessment, we can, we have the luxury, if you will, of being able to use uh, probabilistic methods on both exposure and uh, toxicity. So you can start to construct some more, co some more complex models. And uh, along with that is this notion of assessing risks to populations rather than individuals. And EPA uh, just had a workshop uh, and I believe is uh, potentially imminently going to be issuing some guidance on this topic. So this is kind of an, an exciting new thing for eco-risk. Uh, another topic, and for which there really isn't guidance, but a lot of practitioners are kind of uh, taking the ball and running with it, so to speak, um, is this issue of multiple stressors and risks over larger spatial and temporal scales than might be dictated by the particular uh, project at hand, which, say, a Superfund site or something like that. Of course, we all know populations move across boundaries, and they don't care that the boundary of the site ends at a particular place. And, they're not exposed to just the chemicals. There are multiple stressors, multiple competing stressors, and um, a lot of eco-risk practitioners feel quite strongly that one has to really think about that all holistically when making a determination of risk, particularly with respect to just the chemical part of it. So. Um, Again, there's no sort of guidance really for this, and I would say that in the majority of cases, uh, you, you end up having to do sort of a regular risk assessment or fall back on that. But um, I think analytically, a lot of practitioners are, are kind of moving in this direction. So this would be things like Wayne Landis's uh, relative risk framework, um, net environmental benefits analysis, uh, risk of remedy, People call it different kinds of things, but what they're really trying to get at is um, maybe if I have a forested wetland with sort of uh, borderline, if you will, concentrations of mercury that, strictly speaking, exceed a, a hazard index or a hazard quotient, but if I actually dig that up, I'm doing more damage to the potential, to the habitat value and quality of that property. And maybe it makes more sense to actually leave that intact and focus on another area of the site. It's, you know, controversial, of course, because it sounds like, well, you're just trying to get out of not cleaning up. It's not actually about that. It's about making the best decision for the environment, you know, literally. Um, and it, yeah, again, along with that comes this notion of a, uh, more of a landscape kind of analysis. Wayne Landis, again, is, is somebody who's uh, done some work in that area, and, and other people as well. Another issue that, and it's related to this, actually, net environmental benefits, for example, 
is this notion of ecosystem services. And through, the, the, uh, through this vocabulary of ecosystem services, we find our strongest links to the human environment as well, because of course the environment generates services that benefit not just ecological receptors, but also humans as well. And um, as ecological risk assessors, we feel that it's important to get involved in this area. And uh, we, we feel we have a contribution to make, of course, because ecological risk does concern itself with the natural environment. We didn't actually pull off any short courses or workshops for this year. I don't know what we're doing. We can't get the website done, can't get the workshops done. We're all out there working. Um, but we are talking about either uh, something along the lines of population uh, risk, especially if EPA is, issues some guidance. I know there's some papers coming out about it. Uh, we're also thinking about something related to ecosystem services. Um, Wayne and I are definitely going to do an advanced methods symposium um, because he um, and we, uh, to some extent, over at Harvard are doing some interesting work using Bayesian statistics and that kind of thing. And a lot of people like those kinds of tools and have used them in other contexts. And so we want to um, sort of appeal to those sort of people in the ecological context. Ecological risk tends to be a small sort of part of SRA. Um, I think all the ecological risk assessors, for the most part, that I talk to, tend to be, you know, CTEC, uh, Society for Environmental Toxicology and Chemistry, people. And you tend to see them there, and, and they certainly don't all come to SRA. And so we, we, um, are, we have it in mind a little bit to be, uh, you know, to try and sort of generate a bit more interest in, in eco-risk I think people think, well, ecological risk, you know, I'm not calculating risks to raccoons, so why do I care about that group? But, um, you know, we're trying to demonstrate it's not really, that's not really our only focus, in fact, not by a long shot. And uh, so we think one way to entice the interest of others is sort of with this advanced methods, because there's a lot of people out there who like you know, fancy kinds of things, and we have fancy kinds of things too, so. Um, and to that end, we'd like to put together a series of papers for ETNC and or risk analysis. And uh, this is mostly Wayne and I talking about it every time we see each other. But we see each other fairly frequently, so we're, we're, really, we're trying to really move forward on this. And the, the, new, the incoming chair is also, Kurt Franson is also on board. So I'm the current chair, uh, again, as of uh, Monday, I guess, tomorrow. And Kurt Franzen at Kleinfelder is the chair elect, and Wayne Landis is the past chair. So any one of us are um, certainly approachable at any time. And um, we don't have secretaries, we don't have treasurers. Our election will be a hand-raising thing tomorrow <laughs> at, at lunch. Uh, it's it's all uh, you know we're we're quite small and quite casual, but. Um, friendly and inclusive as well. <laughs>